Uh, I'm Jose Espinosa Carrasco uh, from, uh, from the Comparatives Bioinformatics Group, uh, the CRG, and today I will introduce you NFCore, the NFCore ChIP-Seq pipeline. Okay, so a little bit uh, of background uh, about me. Uh, so I'm currently a postdoctoral research fellow, fellow in the lab of, in, in Notre Dame's lab. Uh, at the CRG, the Comparative Bioinformatics uh, Group. Uh, as some of you may know, this is the group where Nextflow was created by Paolo Di Tommaso. Uh, and actually, when it's like my second time I'm there, so when Nextflow was developed, I was already there. Uh, and actually, uh, I put also these uh, two things here because uh, we are actively contributing to, to Borforec that it's uh, a consortium to annotate the, the, the genome of, of, the, of the cow. As most, my, my boss likes, likes to say it's uh, the encode for, for cows. And this is in a broader, uh, this is in under the broader umbrella of the Eurofun, which is a functional uh, annotation of animal genomes. Uh, and yes, which, aims is to, to annotate animal genomes. And we are extensively using uh, NFCore pipelines for, for this, both in BOFREC and in Eurofunk. And I'm also a, a core member of, of NFCore. Okay, so a little bit of background about ChIP-seq. Probably all of you know about this, but uh, what we want to, to obtain when we do ChIP-seq experiments is this kind of peaks, which are uh, showing us where our transcription findings, uh, uh, our transcription factors are, are binding in the genome or, or the instance modifications. And this is normally how the experimental procedure is done. So there is a, a cross link between the, the transcription factors that are proteins and the DNA in the place that they are, they, they are sitting. This is normally done with formal date. Uh, then after this, uh, there is this sonication procedure to get rid of, of the rest of the DNA. Then there is an immunoprecipitation uh, step, which is uh, what gives the name to the technique. Uh, and this way we take the, the transcription factors that we are interested in, and then the DNA is purificated and, and the library is prepared. So I'm not a wet lab <laughs> guy, so probably uh, many of you can explain this better than, than myself. Uh, and yes, as I said before, this is the kind of, of things that we obtain after uh, we have run uh, our NFCore chip seq pipeline or other SPAT pipelines. Okay, so some figures uh, from the NFCore chip seq pipeline. So I was uh, looking at it yesterday and in terms of stars is the third more popular pipeline, uh, although it has not been updated for a long time, as we will discuss today. Uh, so yes, it's a quite popular pipeline and, and thus also a quite used pipeline. And it was originally developed by Chuan Wang and Philly Wells. And then uh, it was, uh, mm, yes, modified to be in NFCore by Harshil Patel. Uh, so yes, as I just mentioned, uh, so this is this timeline shows, uh, I think if I'm not mistaken, I was looking at this yesterday because I thought that ChIP-seq was one of the first uh, pipeline to be released in NFCore. It's not the first, 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 but it's among the 10 first ones. So as you can see here, it was the first released in June, 2019. Uh, and, and this is the, the release cycle of the ChIP-seq pipeline itself. So it was first released, as I said, in June 2019. And then uh, it has updated in, in November 19 and uh, version 1.2 was released uh, in, in July 2020. So these are two minor releases. So this means that since this point, it has not been any real big update on the on the pipeline. Ah, well, this is I forgot because I put it in the in the uh, slide. Okay. 
Uh, so we are working in the development of the DSL2 version of the pipeline. Actually, uh, most of the things that I will discuss today can be applied both to the DSL2 and the DSL1 pipeline. But if they cannot be up, if they can only be applied by to one of the versions, it will be to the DSL2, uh, even if it's not yet the stable version. Uh, yes, we have been trying to release the pipeline for a long time, so we are in this sense similar. <laughs> we are approaching to Sarek, or or even worse than Sarek, <laughs> and and we are, we have not released the the the, the version 2.0, although we are very very close to it. So here is the pipeline overview. So uh, if it starts with your fastq files uh, and an input uh, and a speed sheet that I will discuss during the presentation. And there are some quality uh, control uh, processes like fastqc here. Also the adapter, well, this is not quality control, but uh, the the adapters are removed with Tringalor, and then uh, the alignments are, are performed. So in the version 1.2, uh, the only aligner that was available is BWA. And now in the new version, these three uh, other aligners will become available, both I2, Star, and Chrome App. And after the alignment, some aligner, alignment stats, uh, statistics are calculated using some tools. Uh, then <laughs> there is these other uh, processes that are shown here. So the replicates, uh, if there are replicates, are merged using uh, PyCard. Then um, duplicates are marked also using PyCard. There is some uh, quality control for at the alignment level using uh, PreSeq and PyCard. And uh, also the, the BAM files are, are then uh, filtered. Uh, by the, the duplicates, so the duplicates that we have uh, marked a, in the previous step. And also uh, the blacklisted regions are, are removed. So there are some uh, regions in the genome that are difficult to, to align, and these are known, and, and these regions are removed uh, with some tools. And then also some uh, after all these steps, steps, some other aligner. So this, after all these procedures, uh, this there are some aligner, uh, alignment statistics are calculated. So, uh, and then here uh, we have some uh, of the um, let's see real analysis that the pipeline performs. So we produce this fingerprint plot uh, and the redistribution profiles. Uh, these are uh, mm, also could be seen as quality control uh, plots because uh, you can see the distribution of the profiles of the peaks, uh, for instance, binding to the DNA. Uh, also, this strong cross correlation uh, peaks procedure is, is, is run with phantom peak qual tools. And uh, mm, uh, big, 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 weak files are produced with the peaks so that they can be uh, used downstream and for the visualization. Uh, and then we also, of course, call broad or narrow peaks. So the, the, the pipeline uh, allows to, to have these two modes. So normally narrow peaks are called for transition factors uh, and, and and broad peaks are, are called for system modifications because the regions tend to be much wider. Then uh, we run Homer to see how these peaks, uh, the annotate, well, yes, the, the annotation peaks that are produced, how they uh, uh, are found relative to the genomic features, for instance, genes. And there are also uh, Mm, this uh, process to with also with max two, which uh, it's to call consensus peaks uh, across a given IP, uh, and we also run these uh, um, subread feature cones to to have uh, the the number of reads that we found by by peak for example, and uh, this is something that actually also we will discuss 
it's uh, we run this seek only for quality control. So only the PCA is produced before in the previous version, some differential expression analysis uh, was done, but as we agreed that these uh, dumb uh, stream processes should not be in the, in the main pipeline, that's why they, they have been removed. So here I'm listing the main uh, DSL2 updates and future. So of course the pipeline has been poured to, to DSL2 syntax. This means that we all the, the models have been that were not are yet available in, in modules has been to have been implemented. Also, we need to implement some new modules for tools that we need several in, in one process. Well, you probably are familiar with this. And more uh, specific to the pipeline, so the, the files containing the blacklisted regions that I mentioned before uh, have been updated. Uh, we have included these new aligners, so BBW8, it's the default one still but you can choose uh, from this. Actually, uh, that's something that I'm not completely sure if Chrome map, it's, it's working as expected, uh, but probably here we, I will need the, the, the help from someone more familiar with, with this aligner. Uh, then uh, the, um, the effective genome size logic have been refactored. This is a parameter that it's need for max two to annotate peaks. And we have changed the, the logic. Uh, the input sample sheet uh, format has been modified. And as I mentioned before, the, the differential expression analysis uh, has been removed from the consensus peak comparisons of the pipeline. And of course, we have fixed some, some bugs. So this is just to show you about this uh, blacklist regions. So, uh, and here, the main thing that I wanted to, as you see, the, the, the issue is closed because this has been already implemented. But uh, just want to, to, to throw a warning that if you are still using 1.2, uh, uh, you probably need uh, to update the blacklist in the case that you are using one of these of, of the genomes that uh, where this uh, list are available using this parameter, the blacklist parameter of the family line. Uh, if you are using the development version, you don't need to care about this. Uh, then, as I mentioned before, for the max uh, max two needs this uh, effective genome size, this max size parameter that it's uh, encoded in the pipeline, and we have included now in the iGenomes configuration the max size for the corresponding width length. We have been we have calculated this based on the on this on this uh, link here, and. Uh, if the genome is in the iGenome uh, file and you provide the read length, it will be automatically taken from these maps. If not, uh, so that's why we need uh, this new read length parameter. And if this is not the case, uh, in the same way that we calculated these values, the pipeline will calculate uh, the values for, for, for your genome using the cage mer unique MERS model. That has been implemented. Then this is, uh, I think I'm quite <laughs> late. So this is how the, the input uh, looks like. So you have the, the sample, FASQ1, FASQ2, antipody control. We have seen this several times in similar formats in during the bite size uh, talks. But as you can see here, uh, we have the sample. The, these samples will be merged. So for instance, these two, samples will be merged. So everything that it's before this rep one and rep two and are this identical, this will tell the pipeline to merge the, the, the samples. If you have a single N uh, reads, like in this case, you just provide the, uh, the, the, the file here. If you have a parent, you will have to provide the, the second file here. This is the IP. And this is the control. And the control, as you can see here, is, is then listed here. And of course, has not this control uh, field. So for run the pipeline, then once you have this uh, split sheet, you just need these, these parameters. So this is for running the, the test full. And you just need, in, in, in fact, this is taken from, from this uh, link is uh, what the test full, it's using to run this full data test and you provide the genome and now you have to provide the, the read length <clears throat> so that we can take the value 
of the max z size parameter from the from the map in the genomes. And with this command, you will be able to run the, the pipeline. In this case, I put dev development uh, branch because uh, as I mentioned you, it's almost uh, in production and and it could be quite safe to, to use it with the new features that it has. And, and yes, and <laughs> probably it will be uh, there before, before the end of the summer. Uh, then, yes, there are more parameters that you can uh, take a look in the parameters doc to, to parameterize your, your run of the, of the pipeline. Please take a look there. And if you have any question, just drop us a line in, in Slack. And yes, this is something that pops up uh, many times in Slack, and that's why I put it here. So you need controls for running the ChIP-seq pipeline. We know that there are experiments that are old and maybe they did not have controls, but the, the pipeline currently, it's uh, designed to, to be used with controls. And there is like a kind of a hack. That's why I put this, this answer from, from Harshil. I don't know if he's connected, whether he's connected or not, is that you can use the attack seek pipeline if you don't have controls using this uh, parameterization and in principle it should work but ideally the the best thing is to to use controls if if you are designing your experiments and of course you, you should have your your controls uh and then yes so this is the the output of of the pipeline that with the command line that I previously mentioned. So this is available also in the in the website. So you can go there and see all the all the results uh, with the full test data set. This corresponds still to the version 1.2.2, but hopefully soon it will be updated. And then we already have plans for, for future releases because we wanted to, to make this the 2.0 out. And also we wanted to to be quite similar to the version 1.2 1, 1 uh, so that we can identify any bug or any problem that we have. And then from, from there, we can start growing the DSL, the, the, the version 2.0 if, if there are features that are needed by, by the community. And these are, <coughs> of two, well, yes, two of the, of the things that are planned for version 2.1 will be to include the MetaMap. As you have seen, I have done this a schematical before which is was not very nice so but they didn't have time to to take a look to to james <laughs> talk and and, have the, and create it and also we would like to to create the to add the the reproducible discovery rate that it's used to to check consistency between replicates and it's kind of a standard because it's the measure that was used by by encode and of course we are open to ideas and if you find a bug please tell us and yes, uh, uh, with this, I'm, I'm done. So we have now a, a summer break uh, in terms of bite side talk. So until I think it's the 13th of September, uh, but probably Francisca know better than me. So if you have any question, just tell me and that's all. Uh, thank you very much. Um, so I have now enabled for everyone to um, unmute themselves. If there are any questions, you can do so and uh, just ask them directly or put them in the chat. Okay, thanks. Um, I have a question. So I was wondering, that was a great talk, by the way. That was good. Thanks for the effort. So I was wondering if you could while supplying the command line arguments, change the genome build, since it looks like you hard coded the HG19 into the code. So the, the thing is that you can provide, uh, so in the iGenomes configuration file, there are several uh, genomes. One of those is the HG19, but there are more. Uh, and there are not only human, they're also from, from, from uh, mice and so on. So if you can check the key and this way, all the files that you need, the FASTA file, the genome FASTA file, these uh, genome sizes that I told you, they are automatically rendered by the pipeline. But in the case that you don't have them, or I mean, in the case that you are running, I don't know, a genome that it's not there, you can provide uh, these parameters to the pipeline and these files and it will run. So it's just, uh, for simplicity, that I include this genome you know, in the in the command. It's okay. Yeah. Thank you. 
Are there any more questions? Okay, if uh, there are no questions, then I would like to thank uh, Jose, of course, and uh, the John Zuckerberg Initiative for funding of these talks. And as usual, this talk will be uploaded to YouTube. And if you have any questions later on, you can always come to the Slack channel of Chipsec or from Bitesize and ask the questions there. Thank you very much. <laughs>